So, did you like going to school when you were younger? Well, today we're going to be talking about what it would have been like to go to school back in the 1780s with Jane Austen. We're going to be going into Jane Austen's two different experiences at boarding schools and what it was like. Do you like classic literature and history? Well, if so, good news! That is what this channel is about. So if you want to learn more about Jane Austen and the 1800s, then definitely subscribe. So I already talked a lot about boarding schools in general in my video on girls' education in the Regency era. So definitely check that out if you're just interested in the overall boarding school concept during this time period. But I really wanted to dive in specifically today with Jane Austen's experiences at them. And she went to two different boarding schools, as I said. So let's talk about the first one. So when Jane Austen was seven years old, she and her older sister and Cassandra and her cousin, who was also named Jane, Jane Cooper, get sent to a boarding school ran by Jane Cooper's newly widowed aunt. It was one of those boarding schools where that aunt is like, I'm a widow. I need money. I guess I'm teaching a school now. And so of course their extended family is trying to support her by sending their girls to the school. And at first the school is set in Oxford and then later it's moved to Southampton. But Jane Austen overall only stayed there for a year, mainly because, well, typhus. <laughs> Basically, as I talked about in the video on girls' education, illnesses could just run through a school super quickly because these girls were all sharing bedrooms, they were all living together, and yeah, pretty much Jane Austen almost died of typhus at seven years old and we would have no pride and prejudice. So Jane and Cassandra and Jane Cooper all had typhus and the schoolmistress did not send that information home to their parents. Maybe she didn't want them to think she wasn't capable of handling the school. But Jane Cooper did get the message out to her mother and so her mom and also Mrs. Austen descended on the school to come take care of their daughters. And and so thankfully, because of that, Jane Austen survived, and now we get to read about Mr. Darcy and Pemberley. But unfortunately, Jane Cooper's mom catches the typhus from Jane, and then she dies, which is super sad. So that was Jane's first super short stay in a boarding school. It was like from the spring to the summer. That's how long it took to almost get her killed. So she goes home, she recovers from typhus, and then pretty soon the family is up for trying again. And this time they go about it differently. They decide to send her to a very well established and well run boarding school in a town called Reading, which is pretty close to London. So now Jane, about nine years old, sets off to go to this new school called Reading Abbey Girls School. And yes, it is set in the ruins of an old abbey. Dun, dun, dun. So part of the building is new and part of the building is where the monks used to sleep in Reading Abbey before it was pretty much destroyed. And yes, it's a very gothic. A lot of people think that she drew inspiration for Northanger Abbey from the school. And while she was there, workers on the abbey discovered the hand of St. James. That's right. There's like a mummified hand that used to be, of course, a relic in the Catholic Church that people would want to come and see. But it was the hand of St. James they discovered and it's all old. So I was thinking that probably added to the gothic moment. You know, imagine being nine years old and being like, they unearthed a hand. Maybe the fact that it was of St. James made it less gothic. I don't know. But this is what's happening. She's living in a gothic abbey ruins with dead hands happening. So it cost her family about 36 to 37 pounds per half year for Jane and Cassandra to go to school there. The head of the school while Jane Austen was there is someone known as Mrs. Latournelle. But that wasn't really her name. Her 
real name is either Sarah Hackett or Esther Hackett. And whether she was a Mrs. has also been debated. There is information that says she was both a widow of a guy who pretty much died in the poorhouse, or that she simply used Mrs. because of the respectability it adds. Like I talk about in the video, does Mr. Darcy have a first name? Servants, once they reached a certain rank in the household, would automatically become Mrs. whether they were actually married or not because it was a term of respect. And so women who were governesses or teachers, once they hit a certain age, they just transitioned to using misses. So they looked more mature and respectable pretty much. I remember reading this one funny thing a governess was saying, I'm going to start using misses now. And maybe that'll make people think I'm a young widow and everybody loves a young widow. It might get me a husband. So I just think it's interesting how it was better to be a young widow than to be an old maid. Of course, that whole topic on the respectability of being married versus being single is a whole thing for a different video. Anyway, so Mrs. Latronelle is not her real name. So why is she using that name? Well, the Basic answer is because it sounds French. And remember, one of the main accomplishments all parents wanted for their daughters was for them to be able to speak French. And we do know that both Jane Austen and Cassandra both had a great command of French, but some people attribute that more to them spending time with their cousin Eliza, who did speak fluent French. And I actually have a whole video on her and her mother's lives. Either they've come out or they're coming out. So stay tuned for those. Mrs. Latronel was very welcoming and kind. She wasn't particularly religiously devoted at all. Meanwhile, her partner was someone named Miss Pitts, and this is the dramatic backstory of Miss Pitts. Pretty much what happened was that she was originally a student at the school under Mrs. Latronelle, and she was a parlor boarder, which if you remember my video on Regency Era Girls Education, that's like the super fancy student, right? It's first class studentship. Here. Anyway, she expected to inherit quite a bit of money from her uncle when he died. But get this, her uncle dies and he leaves all of his money to his housekeeper. Right? It's just like his housekeeper? And he like totally left her out in the cold. I wish there was more known about this drama because I want to know, but it's not available. So... That's dramatic though. Anyway, because now she is poor, but of course she has the accomplishments of a lady and went to this good school, Mrs. Latronelle is kind enough to take her on as a partner in the school. So now it's Mrs. Latronelle and Miss Pitts running the school. Shortly after Jane Austen leaves, they bring on a new teacher and he's a guy. His name is Dominique de San Quentin. Again, I'm killing all of the French names in all of my videos, but I'm sorry, all French people. He's a French immigre escaping the French Revolution. That's why he moves to England. So Dominique shows up and him and Miss Pitts totally hit it off and they get married and it's all great, except for the fact that Dominique kind of has a gambling problem and he's going to totally squander the school's funds in a few years. But that's a total different topic there. Not actually important to Jane Austen's story, seeing how he's not even there yet, but just thought you'd all want to know what happens to Miss Pitts after her uncle leaves her out in the cold. Anyway, the school does have several other minor teachers who come in to teach different subjects like spelling or sewing or whatever, but these are the main players of the teachers. And two, there happens to be a boys school run by Dr. Valpy right across this big park lawn thing they call the Forbury and across there is the boys school and so sometimes they would have dances with the boys school the teacher of the boys school is friends with the teachers of the girls school and a lot of the brothers of the girls go to the boys school and so they sort of have like that intermixing with the boys school across the Forbury too. Okay so what was Mrs. La Turnell and her school actually like to go to? Let's get down to this point now and the answer is she ran a good school kind of like Mrs. Goddard did. A lot of people think that Jane Austen based Mrs. Goddard school and Emma off of this school. And Emma describes the school as 
Mrs. Goddard was the mistress of a school, and not of a seminary or an establishment or anything which professed, in long sentences of refined nonsense, to combine liberal acquirements with elegant morality upon new principles and new systems, and where young ladies for enormous pay might be screwed out of health and into vanity. So that's not what the school is, but what does it actually do then? But a real, honest, old-fashioned boarding school where a reasonable quantity of accomplishments were sold at a reasonable price and where girls might be sent to be out of the way and scramble themselves into a little education without any danger of coming back prodigies. Well, unfortunately for Jane Austen, she did come back from the school of prodigy. But I think that probably had more to do with the fact that she already was one when she went there. Mrs. Goddard's school was in high repute, and very deservedly, for Highbury was reckoned a particularly healthy spot. She had an ample house and garden, gave the children plenty of wholesome food, let them run about a great deal in the summer, and in the winter dressed their chillblains with her own hands. So, of course, all this information on healthy spots is important because you don't want a repeat of the typhus incident. It was no wonder that a train of 20 young couple now walked after her to church. She was a plain, motherly kind of woman who had worked hard in her youth and now thought herself entitled to the occasional holiday of a tea visit. So, as it says, there's 20 couple of girls at the school, which would be 20 times 2 is 40. And, of course, there's about 40 to 60 girls who lived at Reading Abbey boarding school. So what was daily life in the school like? Well, in the morning, they would have their lessons and things like spelling, sewing, and history. They would have dance lessons about twice a week where the dance master would come in with his little fiddle and help them shape up their dancing, which they would have occasional public days where the public could come and watch them perform their dances, which I think is hilarious because that's the same thing elementary schools do today, right? It's like all the kids have have to learn this dance and like little song and all the parents then have to show up and watch it. <laughs> so nothing really changed since the 1780s. So that would be the morning of them doing lessons. They would be split up into different classes based on one factor would be age. Of course, the really young children like Jane would have been together while the older girls would have been in a different class, but also partially on actual social class. The parlor boarders got extra special lessons compared to the rest of the students, it seemed like. And also at the school, they would learn that if they were enjoying this video, that they should like it. That was like a very important lesson that was repeated daily. Okay, not really, but if you do want to like this video, that would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. But then after their lessons in the mornings, in the afternoons, they pretty much ran around and did whatever they want. They could play in the gardens. They could read shocking novels. She would hang out with Cassandra and possibly tag along while Cassandra gossiped with the other girls. And of course, all the girls would eat their meals together and they would sleep six to a bedroom. Also at one point, while Jane and Cassandra and the other Jane were at the school, their elder brothers of Edward Austin and Edward Cooper came to take them out to dinner, which I'm sure they super enjoyed. But I was thinking all the other girls at the school probably also enjoyed it. They were probably like watching out the window being like, it's a boy. I mean, they did interact with the boys' school across the way, but I think if anyone has ever been in a situation, whether you're at a girls' camp or a girls' school for some reason, you know that if you've just been around other teenage girls for day after day, and then all of a sudden a boy shows up, it doesn't matter if he's not that great of a guy. Everybody is in love with him. I had this experience when I was about 14 years old working with this volunteer program where essentially it was a bunch of teenage girls volunteering to help like with these six-year-old kids. For one day, they brought in this teen boy to help. Every teen girl in the program was after this guy. Like he was the last man on earth because it's like we have not seen a boy over the age of six years old in weeks. Anyway, that's just what it made me think of, which has, again, nothing to do with Jane Austen, but was relevant and came to my mind, so now it's in this video. I'm sorry. Right around the time Jane Austen turns 11, her dad comes and takes both her and Cassandra back home, and that is the end of Jane Austen's formal schooling. I say formal because technically she pretty much lives at a boys' school back home. Her dad does take in pupils to tutor, which is something I talk about 
out in my sort of short biography of Jane Austen. I will link that video here. And also she seems to have unrestricted access to her father's library. She's an extensive reader. And it's very interesting when she goes home from the school, she starts writing her juvenile writings, which are still readable today and are hilarious and incredibly awesome, by the way. And so I do think that a lot of Jane Austen's education did come from her family, from books, and her own lifetime of being curious. This has been what it was like to go to school with Jane Austen. Let me know in the comments below if you think you would have liked to go to a school ran by a woman with a fake French name. My name is Ellie Dashwood and this is my channel where I talk about history, literature, and apparently awkward memories from when I was 14. So yeah, if you like any of those things, please subscribe and have an awesome day. Bye! Thank <laughs> you.